Well, before we get to the movie and to season 11 of Welcome to the Basement, I had a cold open topic all prepared, but I kind of just want to read our text exchange from earlier this afternoon. <laughs> Okay. Matt and I really got to know each other when we were performing in a production of Macbeth. Craig was Malcolm, the Prince of Cumberland, and I was the Thane of Gloms and the Thane of Cawdor, Macbeth himself. Yes. So last night I texted Craig this. Tragedy of Macbeth is on Apple TV Plus, currently watching. You are being portrayed by the quadruple amputee from Buster Scruggs. That's Neville Longbottom, dude. <laughs> <laughs> he will always be the boy in Liam Neeson's backpack to me. Usual time tonight, 6? Yep. See you then, Neville. See you then, guy from Carbon Copy. I'm desperately trying to remember a quote from Carbon Copy. I've seen it many times. <laughs> and then I write back, and I did not look this up. This is from memory. Yes, little sister, I've been busted by the pigs. <laughs> I remembered another line from Carbon Copy. It yes. Was one of George Siegel's. I'll perform it for you. <clears throat> Get out of the way! I've got no breaks! <laughs> I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to the basement. That there's a cat butt. Okay, rolling. Welcome back to the basement, Craig, after our little winter break yes. for our 11th season of the show. That's right. I've taken my long winter nap, and now I'm ready to go. I wanted to start out this season with something exciting and eye-catching. So, if you're ever on the mean streets of Chicago and you find yourself in a tight spot, don't call Elliot Ness. Don't call the Blues Brothers. Call Dick Tracy. I thought this might appear down here eventually. I've considered choosing this one for the show. Released in 1990, Dick Tracy stars Basement alums Warren Beatty, who also directed the film, Madonna, Dustin Hoffman, Seymour Cassell, Mandy Patinkin, and Paul Sorvino, as well as first-timers Estelle Parsons, James Caan, Charles Durning, Kathy Bates, Catherine O'Hara, Dick Van Dyke, and finally making an appearance on our show, say it with me, Al Pacino. The movie was scored by Basement alum Danny Elfman. Director Beatty also hired Broadway legend Stephen Sondheim to write five original songs for the film. Dick Tracy was nominated for seven Academy Awards and won three. Best Makeup, Best Art Direction, and Best Original Song. For Sondheim's Sooner or Later, I Always Get My Man. His only Oscar. As if you really need more than one. As if he needed one at all. It was Stephen Sondheim. So like me, you have never seen that. It came out the year that Batman came out, I believe. The year the after, first... Batman was 89. Oh, okay. As I said, this takes place in Chicago, and if you find yourself in the city of the Big Shoulders, you may find yourself lost. And so today's gift will help you if you happen to have a refrigerator with you at the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Chicago City puzzle, but it's fridge magnets. So it's two gifts in one. So put on your trench coat and your fancy hat and pack your rod into your... Rod Holder, and join us on the old leather couch because we've put out an APB for the film Dick Tracy. I prefer peaceful Beatty myself. <laughs> Gangland thugs left to expire in a pool of blood. Gangland thugs continue to be awesome. This just in, the news on the radio has been drowned out by bombastic music. So there's this little homeless orphan kid, and he's a bit of a scavenger. And he sneaks into a warehouse where a big poker game is going on. They've all got grotesque faces. All of you, moisturize, please. Just a little bit every morning really helps. And boom! And this guy named Flattop, he machine guns a little message into the wall. Eat lead, Dick Tracy. That's right, they're coming for him. Chicago's number one cop. Sooner or later you're gonna decide. Meanwhile, at a club that belongs to Lips Manless, and there's this very sexy singer named Precious Mahoney, and she's singing her no, sing... No, 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 Breathless. Breathless Mahoney. Is that oh. why you kept calling her Precious throughout the thing? Precious. <laughs> Breathless Mahoney. She's a beautiful blonde singer with a certain amount of ambition. 
She is the paramour of Lips. This is the 1990s gangster movie Paul Sorvino will be remembered for forever. <laughs> Lips and Breathless get captured by Flattop, taken off to a secret location to Big Boy Caprice, and he wants to take over the town. He puts Lips in the bath, which is basically a box that gets filled with concrete and dropped into the river. No more Lips. Precious watches all this. Breathless. That kid, you remember him, well, he steals a watch, and Dick Tracy chases the boy down. <laughs> Danny Elfman got this job and thought, well, what have I got left over from Batman? <laughs> I got, I got enough. There's this guy named Mumbles. All right, that was excellent, Dustin. Now do it as Mumbles. Big boy's in charge. He wants to make the dancers racier and sexier, and he's out there giving them hands-on attention, you might say. Smack, smook, smickety smack. Oh, let's go! Come on, come on, sing! Oh. I've done some musicals. This is how choreography works. There's a piano player. His name is 88 Keys. That was a silly thing to do. He's the best piano player in town. Shut up! I'm going to play the piano. It's going to go doop 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 <laughs> And then you slap me in the guts, and I'll play better if I'm not doing good. But and guts. This is what I learned at Juilliard. Hello, big boy. Who's a big boy? You're a big boy. That's right. You're a big boy. How big are you? So big. So big. I'm going to arrest you. They found walnuts shells at the scene of the murder. You like walnuts, don't you, big boy? I love them. I got a number. How do you like them walnuts? And they haul them off to jail. They gotta give Patinkin more than that to do. Uh -huh. <laughs> Precious visits. Who's Precious? Tracy's talking to Breathless. You know, it's legal for me to take you down to the station and sweat it out of you under the lights. I sweat a lot better in the dark. Excuse me if you'll just allow me. Auga, <laughs> auga. I thought that said Patrick Swayze. <laughs> it's a weird font. Swayze! <laughs> they did all of the forensic tests on the walnut shells. They couldn't find fingerprints at all. Big Boy and his gang are released because of lack of evidence. He eats... Oh, yeah. Tess and Dick kind of take the young boy under their wing. They buy him a little suit. He doesn't want to wear fancy clothes, but he wear. He, but they, he, they buy him a little suit. Hey, Tracy, watch out! Thought you were hungry, Tracy, so we got to put got some lead for you to eat. <laughs> Just trying to scare us. And they're succeeding. Breathless comes to see Tracy in his office. She's slinking around like a sleek cat. They almost kiss. <laughs> nope. But not quite. That's just her walking around town outfit. <laughs> Every breath you take, every move you make, every sound you make, I'm watching you. Elfman steps in assertively <laughs> with the timpanies. I wasn't going to run, but the music compels me. Big boy's having a meeting with all the gangsters in town including prune face. Yada, 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 we gotta get rid of this cop and take over the town, you know. Tracy, you crazy? You don't have a search warrant. I'm not crazy, I'm Tracy, Dick Tracy. Dick Crazy is San Francisco PD. The thugs? Oh yes, the thugs come to Tracy's door. They kidnap Tracy. We thought you'd be much more comfortable meeting us here in the basement. It's always more comfortable in the basement. Would very much like to see you. And Big Boy's there and he tries to bribe Tracy. But Dick Tracy cannot be bought, but he can be killed. Dick Tracy is about to be blown up. Luckily, the kid has followed this entire thing. <laughs> Breathless shows up at Dick Tracy's apartment. What are you doing here? Offering sexual tension <laughs> and nothing else. Yes. What are you doing here? Showing off these. <laughs> Oh, Matt, could you pick that up <laughs> You reach right in there and get it. <laughs> Got another one. <laughs> that one's going to stay right here. And they kiss. Go out! Go out! And Tess sees it. Hey, what's the hurry? Where's the fire? In Dick's pants. 
Tess, uh, this is... Again, my sister. We kiss on the mouth. We're from Appalachia. What a cute little boy. I've hit puberty. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. I'll believe whatever you say, Dick. But then she goes into the next room and has an actual human emotion. An emotional reaction to what she just saw. Hey, there's this mystery guy with no face. I'm guessing he's called No Face. He meets with the piano player from the club, 88 Keys. Give that letter to me, boy. Tell him you found it under your door. And please get me some lozenges. Tracy and his men stage a raid on Big Boy's illegal casino. But it turns out Dick Tracy didn't want to arrest anyone. All he wanted to do was create a distraction so that he could bug Big Boy's office. And they're putting a guy up there who listens to the bug. His name is Bug. He's got great big ears, much bigger than human life provides. And he hides up there and he listens to everything that Big Boy says. This way the police know all of the crimes he's about to commit and they stop them before they happen. And Dick Tracy cleans up the town in montage format. Dick Stop Tracy is struck tonight and he is struck hard. Dick Tracy has made an illegal turn. On my list. Dick Tracy contaminates beef. <laughs> you said you had a way of taking care of Tracy. Leave it to me, you said. I'm taking this bomb out of the headlines. Shut up, Clint Eastwood. Get out of here, you. <laughs> but Bug makes a mistake. He spills his coffee one day. And it goes dripping down. What is with this dripping? He takes him to the thing. He puts him in the bath. But he's saved by no face. Tess leaves. Dick Tracy. Tess, true heart. Now Tess, heartbroken. Breathless meets Dick Tracy down at the docks. He could never love someone like me. Not a floozy. Yeah, I, uh, I just wish life was different. Dick just looks at her. Tess is kidnapped. <coughs> oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. The DA, Fletcher, they're going to kill him and they're going to frame Dick Tracy for the murder. They gas him and knock him out. Your big career is over. Someone shoots Fletcher. <laughs> Dick's body is planted in the room. He wakes up. He's got a gun in his hand. It's a cut and dried case. He is sent to prison. Dick Tracy is in disgrace tonight. He is going to change his name to Disgracy. And with no Dick Tracy around, Big Bug Caprice can run, run, run wild. Take over Chicago. North side, south side, all of them. All directions. They help Dick escape from jail so that he can finally solve the crime, get Big Boy and figure out who No Face is, and save Tess, and exonerate himself. All at the same time. Big Boy is told there's something in your attic you gotta see. He goes up there and Tess is tied up there. Oh no. They're gonna kill us on a kidnapping back. We gotta get Tess out of here. Tracy chases after them. He's pretty shamelessly, the movie at this point is pretty shamelessly ripping off <laughs> Tim Burton's Batman. <laughs> Breathless sings a song. Every dot and tittle after the pot. It's too bad that Big Boy's not in there performing with him because the song could really use more slapping and shouting. <laughs> Big Boy has Tess in this gear house, and he's going to tie her to the gear and smash her bones. Dick comes in there to save her. Tracy! Oh, why didn't I think to look to see what he was doing? <laughs> no face shows up, and he goes, bah, 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 bah. Don't move, either one of you. We can kill Big Boy. You can be the front for my empire, but we'll actually be working together. <laughs> Big Boy goes zoop down into the darkness. Dick saves Tess. It's now time to unmask No Face. <gasps> that noise that I just made should tell you who the secret identity of No Face was. It's Breathless. Mahoney, the singer. What? Don't worry, honey. Soon you'll actually be breathless. Ah, I just wanted to be with you, Dick. And she dies. They're at the me they're at the mayor. They're at the diner. And he tosses her that ring and says, yeah, you know what I want. Marriage. Dick Tracy. Mm. <sighs> well, it was nice to look at. Yep, that was it. I thought the color palette that they used was a lot of fun. The color palette is the reason to watch the movie. All of the colors were consistent. 
There was one red, there was one blue, there was one green. Like in the comic strip. And for that, you get an Art Direction Oscar, and then you never watch the movie again. Yeah, the movie <laughs> is garbage. It is so boring for such a vibrant topics. You know, all the possibilities that he could have with this. Warren Beatty. I'm not a huge fan of the guy, but I recognize his talent. Mm -hmm. He was so bad in this. Yeah. He gave Dick Tracy no personality whatsoever. Yeah. Dick Tracy is kind of a Superman type character where he's just flawless. And that is a trap. But Warren Beatty shouldn't be the guy to fall into that trap because he can make a vibrant and varied character. Well, there's only one Beatty moment in the movie that really works for me. When he gets caught with Breathless. And he's like, yeah, who, uh, Shampoo was entirely made out of that moment. Yeah. So many of his best characters are really awkward. Yeah. They're kind of dorks in of this god's body. In this, for the most part, he either looks bored or he looks like he doesn't know what to do. Yeah. He doesn't know how to react to something. A guy with his experience, that's uh, it, that can't be the case. Yeah. There's really no plot. No. To speak of. It's... And, and yet there's... Hundreds of scenes yes. and details. But what it all comes down to is, I'm a gangster, I want to take over the whole thing, and I want to make a bunch of money. Yeah. As opposed to having any sort of plans or machinations that we can really follow. Tess, I'm going to tie you to this gear. It's going to move really slowly, and your head's going to be crushed, but I'm going to put you as far away from that as possible, <laughs> and we're going to forget you're even there. Yeah. It's that over two hours. Just like the machinery of those gears, the machinery of the movie, it's a mystery as to how it's actually working and what it's actually doing. Yes. So who did you like? I actually thought Madonna was good. I this... mean, she's she was great in those nightclub scenes. Mm -hmm. And her acting is not bad. Yeah. Com uh, compared to Beatty, when she's in scenes with Beatty, like yeah. she's electric and Beatty is a slab of granite. She is doing Madonna as advertised, the sexiest woman in the world. Every room she walks into, the temperature just instantly shuts yeah. up. Pacino! I actually liked Pacino in this. I thought his character was a lot of fun. Pacino. Patenkin. Pacino. Patenkin. Pacino. Patenkin. You want it on stage. What did you think of the Sondheim songs? When did I have time to think of them? Oh, Just yeah. like the entire movie, they were all chopped up and thrown into little bits. So you got the kid as well as the girl. He does have tests, but he won't bring her out of there. The Sondheim song that Madonna is singing at the club during the final shootout should have been playing constantly. Yeah. It is the background music of the scene. It's all too much of not enough. This whole movie is too much of not enough. Yeah. Okay, here's a fun fact. There is an actor in this. He is credited as Old Man in Hotel. Mm -hmm. His name is Mike Mazursky, and he was an actor in the original Dick Tracy film in 1945. The Watch Radio, we had a lot of complaints about that during the thing, how little used it was. Mm -hmm. That was probably the cool thing about Dick Tracy in the comic strip. Basically, he had a cell phone, but, you know, it's a cell phone in the 30s, and still a cell phone in 1990 would be a pretty amazing thing. Right. Particularly one that was... Right there. Another missed opportunity, just to use that a couple more times. Mm -hmm. Or have that be integral to a scene. Like, the watch saves him somehow. Yeah. He takes the watch and puts it over there, and someone thinks that someone's behind him, and they turn around, and then he gets the drop on him. Yeah. Just a real lack of imagination and a lack of ambition. I know. It's like, what happened with this? He knows talented people who can write. This kills me. So I wonder, the outcast rapper, Big Boy... I imagine he's close to our age. And rappers really get into gangster pictures. Yeah. Do you think he got his name from this movie? That he was like, all the good gangsters have been taken. <laughs> well, it's played by the guy who played Scarface. I'll be big boy. <laughs> Dick Tracy is now off duty, and we will now remand ourselves to the custody of Seen It. Seen It! John Holger, my girlfriend enjoyed On the Rocks. Seen It. Not seen it. This is a Sofia Coppola comedy. It stars Bill Murray and Rashida Jones. She thinks her husband is cheating on her, and her bored art collector father sucks her into this intrigue of trying to find out the truth. Yes. It's an amusing little trifle, but it's so stakesless. Like, you just never get the feeling that it means anything or has any gravity. Is it about the two of them getting closer? Not really. Not really? And even the threat of her husband cheating on her, you never really get the sense that he is, and you don't really care. Yeah. I mean, the, the story is just so 
It's like a whiff of smoke. If all else fails, she's going to have like this kind of fashion aesthetic, which will be interesting. Yeah, but ultimately the movie was a bit unsatisfying and very forgettable. Then maybe I have seen it. Maybe seen it. And I've just <laughs> forgotten. Okay. Max Wickstrom writes, I found Dune tremendously boring. It was full of stunning visuals and a star-studded cast, but the story crawled along and the main character had no agency whatsoever. Seen it. Seen it. I don't agree with you, but I can see where you're coming from. You saw it on the big screen. I saw it on the small screen. And I think it's one of the great tragedies of the pandemic that it didn't just come out on the big screen. Yeah. It's what that format's made for. Just, you know, the shadows on the sand and stuff like that. Like with Villeneuve's Blade Runner sequel, it is very visually arresting and the production design is top-notch. Those dragonfly helicopters are just gorgeous. I'm going to get one of those. But I agree with Max. I, I was very bored throughout a lot of it. Here's the problem of the movie as far as I'm concerned. Too many different accents in too foreign of a world. Callie Waldman Bergvall writes, Liquor is pizza! is yet to be released in Sweden. <laughs> well, it's been released here, and we've seen it. We've seen it together in the theaters. Hands down, the worst movie title of 2021. And I know that you can look at it in various ways. You can say, well, it was this record store chain back in the 70s in the San Francisco Valley. Licorice pizza is like two things that don't go together, just like the two yeah. characters or whatever. But I, I still think it's a terrible title. But... It's a better title than the original one they wanted to call it. Which is? Soggy Bottom, I believe. Oh, yeah, named after the waterbed concern. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bad name for a store, <clears throat> and it's a bad name for a movie. So what do you think about the movie? The movie sort of smacked me in the heart a little bit. Mm -hmm. I saw it during a very kind of emotionally fraught time in my life, a loss of a loved one. Mm -hmm. I felt another kind of loss, just the loss of my youth. Yeah. Now, you can say, of course, oh, you're young as you're fee you feel, and you can still do, and you know, life begins at 50, and you know, all this stuff, but but you're never going to be 20 again. You can hang out with 20-year-olds, and you can go out and do crazy stuff, and you can sleep around, but you're never going to be 20 again. And you I can, really, I felt that very profoundly you, watching this. You can never run like you ran at that age. And those kids do nothing but run. I know. Even the tubby kid. <laughs> Both of their first movies. I yeah. think Alana Hain might have done something else. Well, the whole band, Hain, yeah. is yeah. in the movie. And her whole family is that family. Yeah. It just confounds me. I think that back when I used to act, that I was a pretty good actor. And that if I was in a movie, I'd do a pretty good job. While her, coming out of nowhere, in just one or two scenes, better than anything I've ever done. And she does one or two scenes 50 times over in the movie. Yeah. And same with, with the Hoffman kid. Sean Henry writes... Romeo and Michelle's High School Reunion. Seen it. A movie that pairs in my mind with Gross Point Blank and an artifact of the time when Gabriel Byrne was enough of a cultural force to serve unspoken in a facelift joke. Seen it. I have not seen it. It's interesting because in the late 80s, there was the movie featuring the dumb hero. I think it started with Bill and Ted, and it continued on through the 90s with clueless and adam sandler movies and romey and michelle and dude where's my car and i always resisted these movies because i prefer the ferris buellers and the max fishers of the teen outsider hero genre they're not complete idiots it's not dumb and dumber oh dumb and dumber that's another one they're just kind of self-involved and solipsistic and life is getting away from them it's been 10 years since high school if you want to go someplace that's not full of grotesque miscreants but it's full of these two rapscallions, you can go to our website, welcome to the basement show.com. There are all of our episodes there that you can peruse, and there are PayPal donation buttons that you can click on to help donate to support this show with a one-time or rolling monthly donation if you so choose. Tell me more about it, Matt. Like, who did it? <laughs> <laughs> well, there was Luke, who says, since you correctly predicted Mads Mikkelsen and Adam Driver's massive success, who do you think is the next next Michael Shannon. Oh, man, just throw this at me. Yeah, you? that's a big question. I'm not sure I have an answer, Luke. I want to say people like, and I don't remember their names right now, but the other guy in Hell or High Water, Ben Foster. Oh, yeah, well, he's, his name? he's been around for 20 I years. I know, that's what I'm saying. All the people who I think of are, like, as old as we are. Mm -hmm. It's got to be someone young, and I can't think of anybody right now. So I think I'm going to put this on my question list and think about it, and I will try and come back with an answer. So will I. And also, Jonas gave us a generous donation as well. 
Return of the Thumb Kiss 2022. <laughs> Speaking of our website, the show notes section is finally updated. And one of our viewers, David from Poland, made a show notes for a couple seasons of unboxing. Yeah. Wow. If you want to see more Craig and Matt chat packages, surprises, you can watch Unboxing, which comes out this coming Friday. It does. And now take a look at this. What's that? Tracy! Daisy! How does physics work? Tracy! Where are you? Daisy! Where'd you go? What, are you there? What are you playing? Hide and seek? Are you over here? You're hiding from me? That's not fair! Oh, I'm gonna... <laughs> oh, Tracy! Your big career is over! <laughs>